Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all if you have a compatible PlayStation 3, how you can jailbreak it from start to finish with a fully fledged custom firmware. For those who do not know, this will be using the online PS3 toolset, and this is from B Gearville as well as the PS3 exploit team. It's a fantastic tool that allows you to connect to a website on your PS3 and jailbreak it directly from there, so it's been really nice, and the PS3 toolset does a lot of heavy lifting for us. So, since it is from B Gearville and the PS3 exploit team, I do always like to give a shout out and a thank you to them because the work that they have done here has been nothing short of fantastic. Now, I also mentioned the PS3 toolset specifically because while as I favor the PS3 toolset method, there is also another option out there, which is the Flash Rider. Now, both of them will get you to the same point in the end. However, the big difference is the Flash Rider you can host yourself on a local server, while as the PS3 PS3 toolset is not self-hostable and it does rely on a website online being available. So if anything ever happens to the PS3 exploit team sites or the PS3 toolset website, it is not accessible for a time being, so at that point your alternative option might be the Flash Rider if you are still needing to jailbreak your system. I did want to at least highlight that here for anybody who might be interested in it, or worst case scenario, if there is something going on with the PS3 toolset site and it is not accessible, I will not be covering that method in this video here. However, I do have a separate video dedicated to jailbreaking your PS3 with the Flash Rider if you are interested in doing that. However, we are going to be doing this here with the PS3 toolset. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have the power and capability of a fully jailbroken PS3 at your hands, meaning that you'll have access to emulators, homebrew tools, homebrew applications, backup loaders to preserve your games, and so much more. It's really awesome having a modified PlayStation 3, and being able to run a full custom firmware on one of them makes it even better. It's also worth noting here that if you already have a custom firmware PS3, you do not have to follow along with this video. This video is intended for people who do not have custom firmware, but if you do have a full custom firmware, you just need to follow along with my custom firmware update guide, which will be linked down below in the description. Now there will be a few prerequisites here. First of all, you do have to have a compatible PlayStation 3 which is up and running. And what do I mean by a compatible PlayStation 3? Well first of all, it all comes down to the model. If you have a fat PlayStation 3 like this one right here, congratulations, you're all ready to go. Your system can take custom firmware. If you have a PS3 Slim, your system might be able to take custom firmware. I'm going to put some model numbers up here on screen because there's some models that can take custom firmware, some that might be able to take custom firmware, and others that cannot take custom firmware at all. However, if you have a PS3 Slim system, it would be recommended to check the minimum firmware version, which I'm going to show you here in a few minutes, because that will be the best way to determine if your console can take custom firmware or not. Finally, if you have a super slim PS3, you cannot follow along with this guide because it will not take custom firmware. However, not all is lost. If you have an incompatible slim or even a super slim, you can follow my PS3 HIN video. That is a different type of modification, and while it is not a fully fledged custom firmware and won't allow you to do everything that a custom firmware system can do, it will allow you to do quite a bit of what most people are looking for, and I would not recommend skipping it because, in my opinion, PS3 HIN is pretty awesome and it has the biggest benefit of working on every single model of the PlayStation 3. So again, if your console's not compatible, go over to the PS3 HIN video and you'll be able to get sorted there. Now, if you have a compatible console or you want to check your console compatibility, you must make sure it is on a proper firmware. And to do this here, you'll need to check the current firmware version by navigating over to the settings column, go into system settings, go into system information, and at the top you need to look at the system software version, and you need to make note of that number. Now you just need to do a comparison and see if that number is the same number or lower than the number that I'm showing on the title of this video. And if your PS3 is running the same firmware version or a lower firmware version than the one shown on the title of this video, then that means that you should be able to continue on with this. However, looking at the PS3 exploit site for the compatibility right here, you could see that the B Gearville PS3 toolset has a supported firmware range and custom firmware compatible is shown right here. So this is regularly updated. So in the future, for example, if there is a new firmware 
firmware update and the firmware you are on is higher than what is listed in the video or what is listed for the B Gearville PS3 toolset or custom firmware compatibility, that just means that you need to wait for the PS3 toolset to be updated. As for the video here, thankfully the process typically doesn't change. So let's say there is a higher firmware update which is out and the video title does reflect that as well as the metadata, but it's higher than the firmware I'm showing in the video itself. That just means that the process is going to be the same as before. You're just going to need a different patch and a different custom firmware. However, the patch you'll need is automatically downloaded and applied, and the custom firmware will be updated down below in the description. But the process is going to be the exact same, so there's no need to panic if your numbers aren't matching my numbers on here, as long as the toolset is compatible with your firmware. Now to continue on, once you have verified your console model and your firmware, you're also going to need a USB flash drive to transfer some files to and from a computer. You're also going to need a computer to download those files, and finally, you are going to need internet access on your computer and your PlayStation 3 for everything to work here. Now, if you're ready to continue on, the first thing we must do here is check the minimum firmware version. And to do that, we are going to have to do a little bit of prep work to get our PS3 ready for the PS3 toolset. For this, all you really need at this point here is going to be your PS3, a controller, and make sure your PS3 is connected to the internet. Now for this, we will have to set the time on our console accurately. And to do this, navigate back over to the settings, go down to date and time settings, and here you'll need to set set automatically to on. And for the date and time, we're going to change this here, and we're going to set this to set via internet. Tap this, wait a few seconds, and as you can see, it has been updated. Now once that's been updated, we can exit out of here. There is also a system setting that would be worth changing here. Inside of here, there'll be a couple, one of which will be automatic update, which I recommend turning off. That way, you do not automatically update your PS3 on accident after it's been modified. Another thing would be display what's new to set this to off. Once those have been changed, we're going to have to temporarily make a new user profile. Don't worry, nothing big here and you can delete it afterwards, but we're just going to set a new user profile for all of our jailbreaking. So for this, we can come up to create new user, user one, or you can call it whatever you want to. For this demonstration, I can call it JB for jailbreak. And once that's been done, hit OK. And from here, you're going to want to sign into your jailbreak user account. Now, once you're signed in here, we're just going to go over to the internet browser and clean up our browser for everything here. Go into the internet browser, and the first thing that we're going to need to do is tap the triangle button. Now, come up to tools, and inside of tools, we're going to go to confirm browser close and set this to off. Next up, go to tools again, go to home page, hit use blank page, go down, and hit OK. Go into tools once more. We're going to now delete our cookies. We next need to delete our search history. We need to delete our cache. And we have to delete the authentication information. And once that's all done, tap the circle button and it should now close out of your browser without any prompt. Now we can go back into our internet browser. And once this opens up, it should be a nice, clean browser to work out of. We're now going to go to the PS3 toolset site, which you can tap the start button on your controller, delete all of this, and this will be the exact website we're going to go to. It will be spelled exactly like this, https colon slash slash ps3toolset.com. And if you need to see this in another way, you can check the links down below in the description of this video, and it'll be right there. Once you're ready to go to the PS3 toolset site, Go down to start or enter and wait for the website to load. And this is the important message that we need right here. It's going to ask you if you want to run a plugin. You always want to say yes to this. So say yes when you're prompted for this here. And the website does take a bit to load in. So just give it a few moments here to finish up. Now, your PlayStation 3 should beep at you, you should get a successful notification there, and you're going to get a message here with some donation links for the PS3 toolset and the PS3 exploit team. If you do like this toolset and it has helped you out, I always recommend supporting and donating them here because the team does amazing work to allow stuff like this to be possible. However, once you are okay with this here, you can come down to OK, tap the button on this, and now we should be loaded in. 
So now at this point, we can come up to System Manager and tap the X button. It's now going to download the System Manager tool. Again, just give it a few moments to wait. And here we go. Once this loads in, this page here is going to tell you if your console is compatible or not. You need to look over at this section here where it says CFW compatible PS3. And if you have a green check mark, that means that you can continue on with the rest of this tutorial. Unfortunately, if you do not get a green check mark, that means that your console is not compatible and you will not be able to use custom firmware. However, like I said earlier in the video, you can check out my PS3 HIN video, which will be linked down below in the description, so you can at least get some more mileage out of your non-compatible system. So if you're going to be installing PS3 HIN, have fun with that, but if you're going to be installing custom firmware, we now know that this is possible on our system. So since we have been able to verify that our console is compatible, we can now close out of the browser for the time being. And once it's closed, let's go ahead, grab a USB flash drive and take it over to our computer because we need to get our download set up so we can actually jailbreak our system. The links for everything that I'm going to be showing will be down below in the description, but the first thing that we should download here is going to be Rufus. This is going to be to format your USB drive because you see you are going to need to format it a certain way for the PS3 to recognize it successfully. In order to grab this tool, just come down here, go to the download section, and if you want to install it, you can either get the 64-bit version or the x86 32-bit version, depending on your Windows installation, or just grab the portable version. I typically just download the portable version. Part of what we're going to do will involve backing up our system flash and then verifying it. And in order to verify it, we need Pi PS3 Checker. Now we need to come to the link for Pi PS3 Tools, and you can come over to this file right here, which is going to be Pi PS3 Checker standalone package, and there's going to be a date on it. Click on this file, and then once you're at this page, click on the download link and download this zip file somewhere you can easily find it. The next thing we're going to need is the actual firmware since we are installing custom firmware on here. So typically the latest firmware that has been up to date here has been the EvoNAT custom firmware from EvoNAT himself. Now I do recommend giving this a nice read here because there's so many options and changes that are done on here. Just EvoNAT has really been doing a ton of work to constantly improve this firmware. However, if you are wanting to download this here, you can just come down to the download section and download whichever firmware will work for you. Now there's going to be a lot of links and you might be a little overwhelmed, so let me just explain this right here. Now typically a retail PS3 is going to be a CEX model. So that means you're going to be downloading either the CEX version or the CEX PEX version. Anything that says DEX on here, you're going to want to ignore it because you cannot install that right now unless you convert your system after it has been jailbroken to a DEX or developer or debug console. Now, if you're choosing between PEX or CEX, really I'll put it like this. If you don't ever plan to make use of developer capabilities and don't ever plan to convert your system to a debug or a dev system, you can just download the CEX variant. However, if you would like those extra capabilities just in case, or in the future, or if you plan to do that here, you can download the PEX variant. There is no incorrect answer here, I'm going to download the PEX CEX version. Now the next step here will be if you're having issues with your system, because there's a few other flags here. Essentially, if your Blu-ray drive is not working, or you don't have a Blu-ray drive on your system, you want to get the no BD option. If you're having issues with your Bluetooth board on your system, you want to get the no BT option. If you have issues with both your Blu-ray drive and your Bluetooth board, you want to get no BD, no BT. And finally, use this one at your own risk. In the last few years, overclocking on the PS3 has been a thing, so if you're wanting to try an overclocked firmware on your PS3, you can get the OC variant. However, for this demonstration here, I'm just going to be getting the PEX CEX version because this will work on all retail units and it will also have some extra developer features, including allowing you to convert your system to a developer system. Once you pick your variant, you want to click the download link. It'll bring you to a mega download page. And I've already saved this here. However, there's going to be a download button in which you can just click download 
let it download, and then save the archive somewhere you can easily find it. Since we've downloaded a couple of archive files, you might need something to extract them, and for this, I do recommend using 7-Zip. It's easy enough to use, it's free, and you can just download whichever version will work for your operating system. You can actually come over to the download section, and there's a few more listed over here. When we download the custom firmware and extract it, we have to make sure that it's not going to be corrupted, so it will install properly on our system, and for this, you can use whatever method you want to check the MD file hash of it. There's several different tools and applications out there. I'm going to be linking this one because it is online and it seems to work well enough, but you want to keep this tab up and running. And finally, you're going to need some homebrew when you actually install custom firmware on your system. So one of the first pieces of homebrew I do recommend is Multiman, which is a nice backup launcher and also allows you to back up your own game discs from PS1, PS2, and PS3. In order to download this, click on Multiman, scroll down here, and you're going to want to download the Multiman base. Just download this somewhere you can easily find it. And in case you are worried about the version number not being matched up, you don't have to worry about this here. Even though this is for a lower firmware, this will work fine on higher firmwares. So now with all of our downloads downloaded and situated, we now need to work on formatting our USB drive. For this here, we're going to be using Rufus. Now do keep in mind for your USB drive, we are going to be formatting it, meaning that all data is going to be erased from this drive. So if there's anything you care about, you're going to want to back up that data to your computer and then format the drive. Just keep that in mind, you've been warned here. But as you can see, mine has been connected, so I'm going to minimize out of that and open up Rufus. You should get this message for user account control, just say yes to this. And if it asks if you want to check for updates, you can say yes or no. I'm going to say yes here. Now you should come to this screen, and right here, you'll need to select your flash drive. If your USB drive is not coming up, you might have to come down to show advanced drive properties and list additional hard drives. However, since mine is showing up, I'm not worried about that. Next up, you're going to need to come to boot selection and change this to non-bootable. Now there's two incredibly important options that you have to set, and if you do not set these properly, it will not work on your PS3. The first thing will be partition scheme must be MBR. It cannot be GPT, it must be MBR. If it is not MBR, it will not detect on your PS3. And the second thing is going to be FAT32. It cannot be any other format, it has to be FAT32. Again, if you do not have MBR and FAT32, this will not work for your PS3. Now the volume label can be whatever you want it to be, but once this is all set up, you can click on Start. And as long as you understand this will destroy all the data you care about here, click on OK, and give it a few moments to format. And once it is done formatting here, we should be all good, you can click on Close, and you're done formatting your USB drive. Now with the drive formatted, let's go ahead, right click, eject it, and take it back over to our console. Don't worry, we're going to mess with the additional downloads later on, but we just have some more work to do on the console. Over the console, plug in your USB drive and navigate over to one of the media columns here, such as music, and you should be able to find a USB device. And if this USB device is showing up, that means it has been formatted properly for your PS3. So now let's work on getting a firmware dump from our console. In order to do this, go back over to the internet browser, launch it, and once the browser opens up, we can go back to start, we can erase all this here, and you're going to go to the same website here, which will be ps3toolset.com. You can come down here, hit enter, and wait for the website to load up. And as it's loading, you can also tap the select button and add this to our bookmarks so we can easily access it later. Now just like before, it will take some time to come back up here, so just give it a few moments. As always, if it asks to run this plugin, you always want to say yes. And now once that is all complete, we can, as usual, hit OK here once we understand that. Now go back over to the System Manager tab and wait for the System Manager to load in. And here we go. Once the System Manager comes up, you're going to need to work on getting the flash memory dumped. So for this, you can go to the Flash Memory option tap the X button, and there's only going to be one option here, which will be Save Flash Memory Backup. Navigate down to this option, tap X yet again, and at this point you should see your USB drive here. Just tap on your USB drive and tap on Save. Give this a few moments here, and it's now going to begin transferring the flash backup. Now, this could be a few hundred megabytes or only about 16 megabytes, depending on your flash storage type. But it shouldn't take all too long, and once it is done, we can click on close, and at this point we can close out of our browser, 
and now unplug the USB drive from your console and take it back over to your computer. And now back at the computer, you must make use of the Pi PS3 Checker standalone package. In order to use this here, you can right click this, use something like 7-zip to extract it into its own folder. And once it's been extracted, double click the folder and you should have something that looks like this here. Now you are going to need to bring your flash dump over from your console. And to do that, go to your USB drive and there should be a dump.bin file. You'll just want to right click, copy this out, take it to the Pi PS3 Checker standalone package folder and paste it in right here. At this point, you'll now want to take this file and you'll want to drag and drop it onto the drag and drop your dump here bat file and just do exactly as it shows, drag and drop it. You'll see a command prompt window that will come up and go through the checks here. And in short, the main things that you're looking for are going to be the number of dangers and number of warnings. Ideally, we want both of these here to be zero. And just to keep this in mind, if there's any dangers, you do not want to continue on with this. If there's any warnings, you might want to look into the warnings here, but you really want to continue with zero and zero. If you scroll up, one of the main warnings typically is from ROS zero and ROS one not matching. So if you get something like that, or really if you get any other warnings or dangers, what I recommend doing is taking an official firmware update and reinstalling that update on your PS3. Then when you reinstall the update, go through the process of loading up the PS3 toolset, making a new flash memory dump, and then check that new dump in Pi PS3 Checker. Again, ideally our option we're looking for is zero dangers and zero warnings. But at this point, since we have zero dangers and zero warnings, we should be okay. A final warning right here, if you have any type of dangers or too many warnings, you do risk bricking your console if you continue on with this, which is why it is so important to do this check here and make sure that you are danger and hopefully warning free. Once that's all done, you can close out of here. And the next important thing here is going to be to keep your flash backup somewhere. So for this, typically what I like to do is make a new folder. And if you only have one PS3 or if you have multiple ones, you would just put something like, put in the serial number value right there, flash backup, something like that. And then bring your dump.bin in here. And again, it should be a small enough file. So at this point, you can go ahead and save this, back it up somewhere, upload it to cloud storage, because in case anything goes wrong with your flash storage on your PS3, you can always restore this using a hardware flasher. So keep this incredibly safe. These are also individual flashes per console. So you cannot use this flash on another system and you cannot use another system's flash on your system. However, the major good news here is that our flash looks good and we should be able to continue on with a custom firmware install. So for this, let's go ahead and get our custom firmware extracted. Just like before, you can right click this, use something such as 7-zip to extract it into its own archive, and inside of the folder that's been made, you can check out what we have right here. There is going to be a readme here, so if you want to give this note a quick readme, you're more than welcome to, and this is actually talking about some new functionality on the firmware itself. There's also some links you can check out if you want to. I believe this is going to be a folder to the rest of the custom firmware variants. And finally, the important thing here is going to be the MD5, which we're going to need for later. So inside of this PS3 folder and the update folder, you'll see it ps 3 updatepup And we just need to do the exact same thing here. So what we can do is we can just really right click, copy the PS3 folder, take it over to our USB drive right here, and paste it in. Give it a few moments to transfer over, but this is going to be important as well. In order for this to be read properly, if you're using Windows, you'll need to come to View and make sure file name extensions has been enabled. But inside of this, you're going to need on the root of your flash drive a PS3 folder. Inside the PS3 folder, you'll need the update folder. And inside the update folder, your firmware must be ps 3 updatepup The file must be all uppercase and exactly like this. And the PS3 and update folders should also be all uppercase. Now this is where you're going to need to verify that your custom firmware has not only downloaded and extracted, but also copied over successfully. So we're going to check the MD5 hash on this. For this, you can come over to the MD5 checker, click on drop file here, or you can drag and drop it, but I'm going to click on drop file here. You don't want to go to the firmware download, you want to go to your actual flash drive itself, go into the PS3 folder, update folder, and grab a ps3updat.pup. Click on open, 
and give it a few moments to hash. And it's now going to give you this series of numbers and letters. This is now where we can grab our md5.txt or you can grab the md5 hash from the download page if there was one supplied there. Wherever you're getting it from, just go ahead and grab the md5 hash itself. Now we should have something like this. And do keep in mind here that this is not case sensitive. So for example, if you see a capital D and a lowercase d right here, that's not going to make a difference. But the numbers and letters must be matching on here. So check the hash that you've gotten from your application and verify it with the expected file hash here. And as long as the numbers and letters are matching between the two, that is a good firmware update. If this is not matching, you might have to re-download the firmware update, re-extract it, copy it back over again, and try again. And this one seems a little silly, but this can happen. If you've done this multiple times and you're still getting a mismatching hash, make sure you are not checking the archive file itself. You need to extract this archive and you need to check the actual firmware file on your flash drive. The archive file is not the one to be checked. Now there's one last thing to do with our USB drive, which is, well, to copy over any homebrew to install. These are going to be package files, and all you need to do is grab your package files and drag and drop them to the root of your USB drive, so they'll be next to the PS3 folder. At this point here, if you also want to clean this up a bit, you can remove the dump.bin only if you have backed it up to your computer in a safe place. But that's not going to be needed at this point on the USB drive. So now you should have any homebrew in the root of the USB drive as a package file, and your firmware should have been checked and verified in PS3 update and PS3 update.pup. Once all that is done, come back out here, right click, eject your USB drive, and take it over to your PS3. Back over at the PS3, we're going to hopefully be hitting the browser one last time. So you'll just want to open up your internet browser, and we're going to hit the select button, go down to PS3 toolset, and wait for this to load in. As usual, if it asks you to run a plugin, always say yes to running the plugin. Once everything shows up properly here, we can hit OK, come back up to the System Manager, and open up this tab. Excellent. Now that we're at this point here, you can come down to the Flash Memory Patch option, tap the X button on here, and tap Load Patch via HTTP. Find this option here, tap the X button, and give it a few moments. It's now going to find the specific patch for your system and work on downloading it. And here we go. Once it is downloaded, it's now going to verify the file is good, and once it is good, we can tap Close. Now once that's been closed, we're going to work on patching our system. This step is required in order to install custom firmware on the console. Now do keep in mind, this is essentially going to be the point of no return. When you are applying the patch, you cannot cut power to the system, you cannot stop the process, doing so can brick your system. So as long as you are all ready to go, go ahead and tap X yet again. Come down here to apply loaded patch, tap X here. And as it shows here, this can brick your system and you need to tread carefully. As long as you are all good to continue and you understand the risks, come over to yes, tap the X button on this, and at this point here, physically put down your controller and do not touch it. This is going to take a bit of time. Now if you have a fat NAND flash system, this is going to patch pretty quickly, but if you have a NOR flash system, whether it is a fat or slim, this is going to take several minutes. It doesn't really matter how long it's going to take as long as the process is complete. There's also going to be a few moments like this where it looks like nothing is happening or maybe this is soft locked or frozen. Do not worry about this here. Again, just trust the process. Don't touch your system. Don't touch your controller. Just let it finish patching. And as you can see, as long as you trust the process, it should patch successfully. You should have that message here, and you should have a green check. Now once that's all completed, you can grab your controller, tap the close option, and now close out of the browser, and your system has been patched for custom firmware. But in order to install it, we have to reboot the system. So hold down the PS button on your controller, 
turn off the console, and then turn it back on. Once you reboot your system, we can use the jailbreak profile one last time, although we're really just doing an update here because guess what? You now actually get to jailbreak the system. So at this point, make sure your system is turned on, make sure your USB drive is plugged in and detected, and once it is detected, you can now scroll all the way over to the settings option, go over to the system update, go down to update via storage media, and it should find your EvoNAT custom firmware or whichever custom firmware you have chosen. Tap on OK and give it a few moments. Now it is going to give you a licensing agreement here and as long as you read through and you agree to this, you can navigate over, hit accept, go down to start, tap enter, and now just give this a few moments. It's now going to copy the update data to your system itself, and then it's going to reboot for the next steps. Once you're at the system update page, you just need to grab your controller, press the PlayStation button, and then the update will begin installing. Now this is going to be another step here. You do not want to touch your controller, do not touch your console, just let the update install. And as a heads up, if it gets a certain way through the update and then it jumps to 100% and reboots your system, that is to be expected, that is a successful install. Again, just give it a few minutes, let it do its own thing, and let the system reboot automatically. And now once your system reboots, it should have a little bit of a different boot up here, which means congratulations, your console has been jailbroken. Now we can go into the JB profile and we don't need this anymore. So if you want to, you can come over here, you can grab the profile, hit the triangle button and delete it since we are now done jailbreaking our system. However, at this point, we can now go back to our regular profile, and the last thing I'm going to do is show you all how to install some homebrew. So you should be able to again verify that your PlayStation 3 has been jailbroken because there's going to be a few new options right here. If you look around, one of them, for example, in the PlayStation Network column, you'll have a few options here, but if you go over to Game, you should also have a PlayStation 3 folder and mainly the Package Manager, which is going to be the most important. Now make sure your USB drive is still plugged in and to install any homebrew, you need to go into the Package Manager, go to Install Package Files, go down to Standard, and then find whichever homebrew you are trying to install. Tap the X button on it, give it a few moments, and it's now going to install it directly from your flash drive to the internal storage of your console. And there we go. Once that has been installed, we can exit out of there. And if you want to, you can now remove the USB drive because we do not need it for the remainder of this video. But if you want to verify your nice new homebrew has been installed, you can now find it, load it up, and give it a few moments. Now here we go, once this loads in, it should look a little bit different, and don't worry, this is not just like a skin for your XMB, this is a whole different application right here, which allows you to load up backup games from your internal and external drives. Now I don't have anything on the internal or external drive here, but another thing you can do is take your PS1, 2, and 3 discs and back them up directly onto your console using Multiman, which is really nice. Now, I'm not going to be breaking that down here, but I do have a full Multiman tutorial linked down below in the description if you're wanting to get some use out of this application here. Now, one of the other things I recommend is when you come over here, go to your settings within Multiman, and we're going to scroll all the way down to theme audio, and I recommend disabling this just to help with performance on Multiman. And once you're done messing around with Multiman here, you can come over to the MMCM page here, go down to quit and quit out to the XMB. When you come back to the XMB, you'll notice that your Multiman has changed to MMCM and that is to be expected. There's nothing wrong with the application, but as you can see here, your PlayStation 3 has now been jailbroken. So congratulations, you are jailbroken, you're running a fully fledged custom firmware and you should be good to go at this point to have some fun and make the most use out of your PlayStation 3. I did cover this early in the video, but just to double check here, since you now have a custom firmware system, I do recommend coming to your system settings and make sure that your automatic update setting is set to off. That way you do not accidentally get updated to the latest official firmware when a new update comes out and you do not lose your jailbreak. I also do want to extend a big shout out and thank you yet again to the PS3 exploit team because their efforts here have been absolutely awesome. They've been phenomenal with really pushing the PS3 modding scene forward in the last few years and making it even more accessible for more people to have custom firmware on their PS3s. And 
really even not custom firmware. At this point, like I said, you can use PS3 HIN and what was thought to be impossible is now possible with being able to run unsigned code on every single model of the PlayStation 3. As it says right here, if you would like to support the PS3 exploit team, you can always donate to them here, and I do recommend giving them a donation if you have gotten any value and enjoyment out of this right here. Typically, the pitch I give is sending off your PS3 to someone back in the day to use a hardware flasher to downgrade it and install custom firmware could have cost maybe $50, $75, $100, dollars depending on who you were going with. Taking a small fraction of that and donating it to the team does go a long way for the community. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped out. Hopefully you are now running a full custom firmware on your PlayStation 3, and hopefully you're getting ready to have some fun with a truly unlocked system. As I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.